Hey everybody, this is Gary Howie, and you are inside the box of rock with the one and only Terry Carr. So we are inside the box of rock. I've been lucky enough to be in the box of rock with many guitar gods. We've had Bumblefoot recently. Kenny Wayne Shepherd has been here. Zach Wilde has been here. Satriani has been here. Whoa. And I've been waiting 20 years to get my good friend Gary Hoey in the box of rock with me. Gary, it's so great to see you. It's great to see you. I'm excited. I, I saw your name on the list of where I was going today. And I'm like, I'm going to see Terry, my old friend. Yay! I love it. All right. We do something called five questions in like five minutes or under. You up for it? I'm up for it. All right. Number one, the guitarist that inspired you the most to pick up your axe. Oh, I would say the, the, the biggest influences for me early were Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath. Um, I would say Jeff Beck, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Eric Clapton, probably are my big ones. Your big ones, your, yeah. to your top list, the Mount yes. Rushmore of guitar players. Yes. Okay, Ho Ho Hoey, I believe, is reaching its 20th anniversary. Did you ever think when you started putting riffage to Christmas tunes, that it would become the, I'm gonna say franchise that it kind of has become for you. I never thought in a million years, um, they always say the best ideas happen by accident. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened with Ho Ho Hoey. My manager said, you know, let's record a Christmas single for radio. We did the 12 days of Christmas. And he said, what are we gonna call it? And I said, well, I've been signing my Christmas cards, Ho Ho Hoey for years. Right, and he perfect. Said, that's brilliant. And uh, Ho Ho Hoey was born. And after the first album, we got so much response about doing another one. And you know, it's been amazing, honestly. We, we do tons of charity events and we do a lot of Toys for Tots every year. And uh, we've helped a lot of people and we've made a couple bucks along the way too. It's great. Awesome. First record you ever bought? First record you ever have the memory of opening up and taking the plastic off of and looking at the inside sleeve? Do you remember? You always remember your first. My very first album I had was Aerosmith's Get Your Wings. Ooh, what a great one. It was Get Your Wings, and I just remember it was the only album I owned, and I used to sit it on the windowsill in my bedroom, and I'd sit and stare at it for hours and look at their jewelry and their shoes and their pants and whatever they were wearing. I mean, every detail of that album cover, I would study and listen to it. Yeah, Rocks for me was a life-changing record, oh. but Get Your Wings, uh, absolutely. Okay, so if you weren't like the guy that everybody's just watching all the time and you decided to sort of be in any band that you could be in, what band would you be in? Wow, that's a great, that's a any great question. Any band, existing or non-existing anymore? You know, I, I, I would, it would be either the Beatles or Led Zeppelin. I, I, I figured you would say one or the which other. Is so boring, I know. It's no, no, so no, boring. it's a very common answer. But yeah, that's because, you know, the great songs and big money. <laughs> all right, finally, social media, because when you and I first met 20 years ago, and, you know, it was focus, hocus, pocus, and you were doing such great things and really groundbreaking things at that time. There was no social media. It was very different. Social media, love it or hate it? Um, I, there's a lot of things. It's a love-hate for me. It's a love-hate because I love the connection with the fans. I love the instant, you know, feedback, but I hate the fact that I have to constantly be checking my Twitter, my Facebook, yeah. my Instagram, yeah. and who knows what else is coming down the road. Yeah. And because I'm an old school guy like yeah. you, we're old school. Um, I, I like talking to people on the phone. I find it to be personal yet impersonal at the same time. Does that make any sense to you at all? You're absolutely right. Yeah. It's like you can have the conversation that really you can get out of it any second. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So tell me about the new record. Uh, well, my latest record's Deja Blues. It's my first full-length blues album. Um, so good. Thank you. I'm, you know, I'm really loving the blues, and my new record I'm recording now is going to be a blues album as well, but a little more rock to it. And I'm doing a new Ho 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 -y album this year after 20 years. Yay! We're going to have a brand new album, and I'm working on uh, Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite which is coming out amazing, and amazing. I'm going to record some other stuff that I haven't done. It's going to be oh, awesome. Oh, some of the greatest music ever. There's never a holiday season that doesn't go by for me without seeing Nutcracker. So I love that music. That's going to be incredible. Yeah, it's uh, and I love that it's public domain, too, so I don't have to pay anybody. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Gary Hoey, it is great to see you. Thanks so much for coming by. And finally in the Box of Rock Yay! with me. Mwah! A pleasure. Box of Rock.